In this video, we're going to go over the basics of destructors in C++. So destructors are a special type of member function that are called when an object is destroyed. And they're kind of like the opposite of constructors. If constructors are about helping to create the object, destructors are about helping to clean up when we're done with the object. Let's go over an example. We'll make a simple class called number. And this class will have one private member variable. It's going to be of type double, and we'll call it number as well. We'll make a constructor to set this number. So we'll say public number double num, and we'll set number equal to the value of that parameter num. We'll also put a few cout statements in number, just to let us know what the number is, and to let us know that the constructor is actually executing currently. So we'll say cout constructor executing, followed by a new line. And then we'll also output the number as well. And we'll follow this by a couple new lines. Next, let's make a destructor. So for a destructor, we also use the class name, but we're going to put a special tilde character in front of it. So we say tilde number. Now a destructor cannot accept any parameters. So it'll always be just open bracket, close bracket. Now the destructor does cleanup work. In this case, we're just going to initially output some statements saying that the destructor is executing and what the number is, just so we can trace the execution of the destructor and figure out when it's actually running. So we'll say C out destructor executing, followed by a new line, and we'll output the number again. So we'll say number, output the number, followed by a couple new lines. So now let's actually try to create a number object. So we can see when does a constructor run and when does a destructor run. So down here, we'll say number seven, seven. And then we'll save and run this program. And we'll get constructor executing number seven, followed by destructor executing number seven. So what's going on here? It's very explicit that right here, we're going to be running this constructor because we're basically calling a function here. That's what the syntax looks like. And we're passing the value seven. The destructor though, seems to be executing in a much more implicit way where we can't see where it's really called. So the destructor is called automatically for us when the program terminates. So when the program is done, that's when the destructor is going to run just as the program terminates. Now that's one place that a destructor can run. But in general, a destructor is going to run when the object is being destroyed. And there's different times at which an object can be destroyed. So for example, if an object is local to a function, when the function completes its execution, the object will also be destroyed then. So let's go over an example of that. If here I said void test, and we make a really simple function that just makes a number object called six and sets the value to six. Now we'll call the function here test. And so when we call the function, it's going to create this object number six. When the function completes though, the object is going to be destroyed. So if we save and run this, we're going to find that the constructor and destructor for that object six there both run before we even make object number seven because the object's lifetime is essentially when this test function is running. So that's another example of where an object is destroyed and it's happening in a very implicit way. We never really call the destructor in a way that's visible. It just happens when the object is destroyed. So what I'm going to talk about next might be a little bit advanced if you're new to C++, but what I'm going to talk about is dynamic memory allocation and destructors. So a very typical use case for a destructor is to free memory that's been dynamically allocated at some point during the object's lifespan. And that's to ensure that there's no memory leak. So let's go over an example of that. Instead of making a member variable double number, I'm going to make a pointer to a double value. And what we're going to do is dynamically allocate memory for a double. So here, instead of saying number is equal to num, I'll say number is equal to double star malloc 
size of a double. So malloc is going to go out and allocate enough space on the heap, a portion of memory where our dynamically allocated data is going to go. And it's going to go get that block of memory. It's going to return a memory address for that block of memory. And double star is going to cast that memory address so that number is going to have a pointer to a double. What we'll then do is set that block of memory, which is really just enough to store one double. And we're going to set that memory address to store the value of num. So what we've done is gotten enough space to store one double value. Number is going to be a pointer to that space. And with this dereference operator, we're setting at that memory address the value num. Now we'll output the value of that number by dereferencing the pointer here. So now our object has actually gone out and dynamically allocated memory. When we dynamically allocate memory, we have to free it. We have to make it available again. So we'll call the free function to free the memory when we're at a point that we no longer need the memory. And if that's the case, that's something our destructor can do. So in our destructor here, we can say free number. And what this does is it basically gives back this chunk of memory that we've allocated to store a number. If we didn't do this, we would have what's called a memory leak. So a very common thing for a destructor to do is to free memory that's been allocated previously. So we'll also output the value pointed to by number by using the dereference operator and the destructor. And if we save and run our program, we're actually going to get the exact same output as before because the objects themselves are being created and destroyed at the exact same points they were before. But the difference now is that our destructor is doing a bit more active work and it's doing something that a destructor more typically does, which is free memory that's been dynamically allocated by the object so that we don't have memory leaks. So I'll show you one more thing that is a little bit more advanced. So if you're very new to learning C++, don't worry too much about this right now, but this may be still interesting for you as well. So we can also dynamically allocate space for objects, and we can also free that space as well using the new and delete operators. So here I'll say number star five is equal to new number five. What this does is it dynamically allocates space for a number object on the heap. And it creates that number object. In this case here, it's going to use the argument five. And then five here is going to be a pointer to that object. Now with a dynamically allocated object, we're going to more explicitly destroy the object to free up the space on the heap that that object is taking up. And we use delete to do that. So we'll say delete five. So delete five will destroy this object and free the space on the heap that it was taking up. So in this case here, we kind of are more explicitly calling the destructor because wherever we have delete five, that's where the destructor is going to be called for this object. So if we save and run this, we get constructor executing number five, destructor executing number five. So it's at this point where we use delete and five, where the object is deleted and the destructor is called. And so that's the basics of using destructors in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.